your majesty at your service. Welcome to Therapy Talks. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of my podcast, Decolonizing the Mind. As your fairy queen, it is my duty to empower you to become the best version of yourself. To become the best version of you, there is no room for hate in your heart. There is no room for ignorance. There is no room for silence about social injustice. I really want to thank you today for taking the time in your day to engage yourself in learning more about decolonization within your own mind. The murder of George Floyd has unearthed in many a thirst for social justice. Racial tensions are on a real high in the USA and felt by the rest of the world. But it's not just black people who are shouting and protesting about Black Lives Matter. Non-black people, and in particular white people, are being allies to the cause and seeking justice for black people who have unfairly been treated by law enforcement. Racial tensions are not a new thing and have been part of our society and world for centuries. At the root of it is white supremacy, which is linked to imperialism and colonization. White supremacy enacted through individual and institutional racism is just like colonization, in that it has an overarching oppressive state that impacts the relationships and social positions of racial colonizers and the racially colonized. Colonization is defined as control by one power over a dependent area or people. It occurs when one nation takes over another, conquering its population and exploiting it, often while forcing its own language and cultural values upon its people. By 1914, a large majority of the world's nations had been colonized by Europeans at some point. The concept of colonization is closely linked to that of imperialism, which is the policy or ethos of using power and influence to control another nation or people that underlies colonization. Modern colonization began during what's also known as the Age of Discovery. Despite the power of colonizers, who claimed lands that were already owned and populated by indigenous peoples, resistance is an integral part of the story of colonization. Even before decolonization, indigenous peoples of all continents staged violent and non-violent resistance to their conquerors. Coercion and forced assimilation often accompanied gains from colonization and scholars still debate colonization's many legacies. Colonization impacts include environmental degradation, the spread of disease, economic instability, ethnic rivalries and human rights violations. Issues that can long outlast one group's colonial rule. Colonization is still very much a reality for some countries in this world. So it's not just something from the past. And the issues are still internalized by many. For any of us to tap into our own greatness and become the best versions of ourselves, we need to go through the process of unlearning racism, rejecting and resisting the ideology of white supremacy and decolonize our minds. In this episode, I want to explore what decolonizing our minds is about and share my own experience with it. I've given you a brief tour into the history of white supremacy and colonization at the start of this podcast. And I would like to invite you to learn more for yourself whenever you're ready to do so. My podcast focuses on the self For me, racism is an ideology that sits deep in the minds of people and derives from the social construct of race. Unfortunately, the ideology of racism 
affects everyone who lives on this earth. And because of that, I think it's ever so important that we as individuals don't internalize this ideology and let it affect the way we see ourselves and others around us. Decolonizing the mind, for me, is about learning about the social construct of race. It's about unlearning racism and white supremacy. And ultimately, it's about not allowing colonizers to dictate the way we think and see ourselves and others. Whether we accept it or not, we have all been assigned a racial category based on how we look or how we identify ourselves. And this can determine real life experiences. It can inspire hate, drive political outcomes and make the difference between life and death. If you're a person who doesn't know or doesn't understand much about race, racism, colonization and white supremacy, it's okay. You can learn. If you're someone who has experienced racism, I feel your pain and it's okay to process your feelings. If you have enabled racism in any shape or form, you have the right to evolve. When you know better, you do better. Your mind won't be decolonized by the end of this podcast. But by the end of this podcast, you will have a greater awareness of the roots of the current racial tensions and have a greater confidence to resist thoughts that are rooted in colonization and start your own personal journey of freeing your mind and take advantage of your position in this world to fight for justice. So how do we start to decolonize our minds? Step one, we have to be in a mental space to accept that the researching of modern colonization is going to unearth a lot of tough truths that may be linked to our ancestry. Two, we have to be prepared to question human experiences in this world and you may feel hopeless. Three, we need to understand our racial category and its impact on our social position. Four, we need to be honest with ourselves and reflect how colonization has affected our minds. And five, we need to commit to be actively anti-racist. A person who opposes racism and promotes racial equality in all facets of society. So you may ask yourself, what do I need to learn about? I personally have not seen a starter kit to decolonizing our minds, but I have seen some books and journals that talk about it. I can only tell you what I have done so far, which has really helped me and allowed me to free myself from thoughts that were imposed upon me. One, I took time to learn about scientific racism, which occurred before colonization and is the basis upon the modern colonizers' justification for their actions. The early thinkers around race happened during the Enlightenment stage and the person who stands out the most to me is a man called Carl Linnaeus. He defined the human race and assigned every ethnic group a colour and characteristics that form a basis of stereotypes and are reinforced till this day. 2. I took the time to learn about my personal ethnic group and its history with colonization. Three, I took the time to self-reflect and see if I inhibited 
an internalized concept in my mind that derived from colonization and negatively impacted me. Four, I have learned to accept who I am naturally and no longer accept colonial ideology to control the way I see myself and others. My personal experience of decolonizing my mind is not a tick box exercise. It's a conscious choice I make on a regular basis. In the current climate of the world, since the murder of George Floyd, a lot of non-black people have been speaking out about racism, more than I've ever seen before. I see many wanting to make a change or make a difference in this world. And I feel that it all starts with ourselves. Once we are equipped with knowledge pertaining to racism, we are in a better position to make wise decisions about our part in being anti-racist. We can all do something. I invite everyone to begin or continue to decolonize their mind. It's never too late. And my last thing I would say is that I truly hope, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, that this is not going to be a trend, but a way of life. Social injustices is unfair on so many levels. It's not grounded upon anything. And as much as I like to live in my head and before you as fairy queen, I live my life as a black woman. And that has got some real life consequences that are not always positive. And this month with this podcast, I want to make sure that I elevate my black experiences to you so that you are able to see that racism or that white supremacy does not just affect police brutality. It's in all facets of society. Everywhere we look, there are nuances and levels of racism. And that really upsets me because I believe in humans. I believe that we're all equal, yet we're not all treated equally. We need to start looking at ourselves and seeing what we believe about who we are in this world. And when we free ourselves from things that we have thought before or were made to feel like, we will be much stronger and we'll be able to conquer any challenge in this world. Fighting for social injustice is not just about making a difference today. It's about making a difference for generations who are coming up in this world. I don't want my children to be fighting for this when they get older. We need to sort things out now. This is the time to make true change happen. At the end of each episode, I address the Queendom. To decolonize our minds, we need to understand the concept of race and colonization. Take time to learn about your history. Give yourself permission to evolve as a person and become anti-racist. Learn to embrace and accept yourself. Do the right thing and remember you can make a difference. Thank you so much for listening to Fairy Queen Talks. See you next time.